Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another special edition of Ramadan Pause. As you know on this program we have been taking you all around the world highlighting uh, the unity of the Muslim nation in this beautiful month of Ramadan. We've had a great time in South Africa, we've had a great time in Egypt and in Denmark and all around the world. However this episode is a little bit different. We're going to take you inside Myanmar, formerly known as Burma. As you may know in the, the recent weeks, months and even years really, the Muslim people of Western Burma have been under severe oppression and uh, that uh, oppression has recently uh, turned into outright violence and extermination, a systematic extermination by their government, by the Burmese government that we have seen before in countries like Cyprus, Bosnia, Kosovo, the South Philippines, Eastern China, and unfortunately many other places. Why don't you give us a call now live on the show, 00202-3855-248 or 249 in order to share your thoughts and concerns uh, with us, whether you are Burmese in, or you are in Burma, or just to share your thoughts and feelings uh, for the Muslims there. The number is 00202-385-248 or 249. Of course, your, your thoughts and suggestions and posts are always welcome on Facebook as well. The URL should appear on your screen now. That's the, as well as our email, which is uh, pulse at huda.tv. That's pulse at huda.tv. Don't forget to contact us via Skype uh, as well. Facebook as well, www.facebook.com slash huda.tv. Of course, our Skype should appear shortly, Huda slash TV, excuse me, Huda underscore TV. Joining me to discuss these issues is the host of Ask Huda, as well as correct your recitation, our eminent Sheikh, Dr. Muhammad Salah. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Muhammad. How are you? Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I'm fine. Jazakallah khairan malik. Barakallahu feekum. And thank you for hosting me. Thank you. for It's an honor to have you on our show. Uh, Dr. Muhammad, we have so many problems throughout the world. This is uh, one of the, the one uh, problem that hasn't been you know, in the media as it should be, uh, which begs the question, where are the leaders of the so-called free world? Where is Barack Hussein Obama in Washington? Where is David Cameroon in London? Although he was recently in Burma signing tr free trade agreements. Where is Angela Merkel in Berlin? Where are the leaders of the free world in this time when a genocide is being committed in Burma? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabiihi wa mustafa wa ba'd. The issue that we're about to deal with is something that saddens the heart of every uh, human being, rather every living creature, not only human beings and not only Muslims. It's an atrocity and the whole world is, is watching. Since I was uh, a child, I hear the Imams and particularly in Ramadan and on Friday sermon making dua, Oh Allah support the weak and oppressed Muslims in Palestine, in Burma, in Afghanistan, here and there, in Kashmir, all over uh, the world. and. Uh, uh, when you say that what are the leaders of the free world and so on, I would rather say what are the leaders of the Muslim Ummah because I shouldn't expect uh, a non-Muslim who would like one day to get up and there are no Muslims whatsoever on earth uh, to rush to support and assist Muslims. In Kosovo, in Bosnia, that these guys in the national community intervene when the Mujahideen started taking over and it had become a point of attraction for uh, jihad. Uh, the term jihad literally means to uh, struggle for the sake of Allah the Almighty, whether to defend yourself, your country, and your belief uh, against the oppressors, or to defend the oppressed ones uh, in other places. So this is the right of every nation and every community, but when it comes to Muslims, they are not allowed to have uh, this right. For instance, if we have this right right now, we don't need the United Nations. We don't need Barack Obama or Mr. Brown or Merkel or any of these guys. We don't need even uh, the so-called um, uh, Arab leaders or rulers because simply we can take care of this on our own as we've done that before repeatedly in many places in the world. Unfortunately, the media along with the Official organizations have labeled those minorities. Uh, 
and uh, uh, oppressed ones who have the right and every right to defend themselves as uh, Mujahideen and the term Mujahideen is scary right now. So those who defend themselves in Syria, I can tell you right now that the international community will definitely intervene and will try to eliminate the Syrian regime once there is something called jihad and it attracts Muslim Mujahideen from all over uh, the world. Likewise in Burma, if there is a support, a real support from the Muslim world, the international community will definitely intervene because they don't want to see a Muslim movement. They don't want to see a banner of Islam raised anywhere. So rather they will send the human rights organizations and the United Nations and all of that in order to calm things down and try to reconcile. While we have literally uh, hundreds of thousands of Burmese, of Muslims, have been massacred and brutally killed. I've seen the images and the videos, which maybe I will be able to show some of them right now. Hundreds of thousands of them since 1962, when the <coughs> General Ni Wan uh, overthrew the government and militarized the regime in, uh, in Burma, and uh, the Muslim suffering have uh, begun. And uh, in 1982, particularly, uh, hundreds of thousands <coughs> Uh, of Muslims were stripped from their citizenship, from nationality. Recently, a woman had to travel out of the country. Upon returning to her house, she was required to get a visa. Subhanallah. The people <coughs> were stripped from their, their basic rights, from education. You know, they have concentration camps on the borders because uh, the state of Arkan, which has a great Muslim population, approximately 4 million, uh, the population of Arkan, 75% uh, of them uh, are, are Muslims. These guys are forced to leave their country. They go to the borders of uh, Bangladesh okay. and they f face another atrocity there because Bangladesh would not allow more than 30,000 uh, to migrate or to go as refugees. So they get stuck here and there. They have concentration camps. Some Muslims were born, raised, and now they work and they are married and have children in these concentration camps. And, and, and it's very unfortunate that uh, they are deprived from their basic rights, whether in these concentration camps or in Burma itself. For innocence, and this is according to the human rights organizations, Muslims do not have the right to own properties, to own lands and houses, uh, do not have the right for education. And imagine, Muslim girls are not allowed to marry under the age of 25 while men under the age of 30, they, they cannot get married. They have to be 30 in order to get married. And they have to get a permit from the government. They have to pay, to pay a, a bribe in order to get the permit. And they go through a series of challenges just to get married. And they're not allowed, only Muslims, they're not allowed to have more than uh, two children. Or else. So they're definitely under severe oppression there in yeah. uh, Burma. Thank you for your thoughts, Dr. Muhammad. Why don't we take a look at the videos so we can get an idea and a feeling of what is happening there on the ground. And after the video, we have a special caller from a Burmese Muslim who will tell us a little bit more about yeah. that. Okay, sure. you guys stay tuned. Please check out this video about what's going on in Burma right now. That you thought that didn't exist That you might find Know that we Are living in our homes While children die Know that we Have all that we need While the orphans cry Sustenance and security They are deprived In oppression and in poverty they must survive
Böyle var ya, ara bana şarkı hücudu da ziyalım mazır, öyle göz yalganım mazım mazır. Uvaşça, tereşça, tarar hücudu, patma var, fani ne var? Hacı, bunları basa sana zilim ondan ara, sandin ova ya jo. For them to be cut to pieces bit by bit Know that we are living in harmony While they are casualties of war Know that we, you can say, are oppression free While there is oppression to the poor The shame and pain they must go through seems unbearable The tyrants of this modern world, they are so terrible. <laughs> we certainly hope that that video really illustrated what uh, the tragedy that is going on right now in Burma. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, can you just briefly give us your thoughts on that video? I guess the video uh, speaks better than a thousand words or even speeches. Those who are wasting uh, billions of uh, dollars for literally games or to host games here or there or to buy sporting clubs or zoos, this is a Muslim's money. Yeah. You know, it's not their own money. They did not earn it. This is the Muslim's money. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put this money in the Muslim lands to be distributed amongst Muslims, not to be owned by certain people, by a family or two. This money, if, if these people are hosted, these Buddhists who are oppressing and uh, uh, persecuting Muslims, they work and travel freely in the Muslim world, in the Arabic countries. They earn, they make profit in businesses in our countries. I mean, you cannot just simply say that we sit and make dua. Of course we sit and we make dua. And we make dua all the time, especially at the time of iftar. But meanwhile, we have to put pressure on our, uh, our governments. We have to put pressure on the international community. As I said in the beginning, international community will not simply uh, make a move because there are Muslims dying here or there. No, <coughs> not at all. Uh, you know, uh, Islam did not begin in Burma. Just yesterday, Islam has entered Burma in the first Islamic century with the Sahaba and the Tabi'een. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas went to Burma uh, and the, he's the Prophet's uncle. Uh, Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu an, and many of uh, the Sahaba and the Tabi'een, they were merchants and traders. And one day, uh, as they were sailing, the ship wrecked uh, on the, the shore of uh, Arakan. Arakan is a Burmese state. And uh, they ended up landing there and they intermingled with the local people. They got married uh, to the women and they established themselves there. Basically, in the, <coughs> in the year 1430, there was a declaration of the first Muslim state. SubhanAllah. So they have a long in history. For sure. 300 years, uh, Arakan and this part of the world was ruled by Islamic Sharia, ah. literally. Then after the British occupation, who resisted the British occupation, Muslims. SubhanAllah. And that's why before the British uh, left uh, Burma, they made sure to split the community and where those wars divide to rule. Which is very effective what they've always done everywhere they go. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mahon, we have a call from a, a, a Muslim activist and public speaker in, uh, in Burma, yeah. uh, a blogger as well. He's very active politically, Brother Mohammed Rafiq. Assalamu alaikum, Brother Mohammed. Thank you for joining us. Assalamu alaikum Assalamu alaikum brother. Alaikum 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 brother. Alaikum. Thank you so Thank much for joining you. us on our show, Ramadan Pauls. Uh, please give us a little bit of background, brother, about the situation there in Burma and about your personal story as well, because I believe now you are located in Europe and not in Burma. Sorry, brother. I'm sorry, brother. Uh, please give the viewers a little bit of insight to what is happening in Burma, and please give us a little bit of your personal story, why you are not in Burma now. Uh, eh. With the Rohingya people living more than uh, thousand, uh, one uh, thousand century in Burma, uh, on their on on that uh, they are uh, like they are persecuted uh, the Rohingya people all the time. Not not only today, not only the this this two few two months uh, two months. Uh, if, if every every you know the uh, ten years, then the two year, five year, and then they will be start the persecution persecution to the Rohingya Muslim people, Rohingya people. And myself, and the, in 1992, uh, when the the government government uh, violation again the in the in Rohingya people, and then I left 
I left my country with my my family, my parents, as a as a refugee in Bangladesh. Uh, in I I was uh, I was I was I spent refugee life in Bangladesh uh, 17 years. Then finally I fina finally I uh, resettled by UNHCR UN UN in Ireland. Thank you, Brother Mohammed. Please give us some more detail about the condition of the Muslims right now mm -hmm. uh, in Burma. What kind of oppression are they facing? Now, now the situation is in, in inside Burma. It, it is very bad. It, it is it it is very bad at the moment. Uh, uh, to, uh, the the population of the Muslim in in Burma about the the about the, about about more than six percentages, and there are two two more. There are there are more than two million of Rohingya. You, you know uh, there are uh, 134 uh, ethnic group in 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 Burma without including Rohingya. Now the those Rohingya, the the Rakhine, Rakhine people who are the Rakhine, Rakhine, the we are living in the Arkansas. There is living uh, there is two community people living in the uh, Rakhine state. I mean, in the Arkansas state, in their the 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 major minority group is the Rohingya group. Rohingya Rohingya people are minority, so mm -hmm. they are, they are violation all the time. The uh, Rohingya people. Uh, now at the at the moment, the situation is the very bad, and the two months, uh, the, the the Rohingya people people are uh, genocide, and they are killing and burning the village and the. And arresting the who are educated person, and and, and uh, the lock they are lock up lock up the mosques, and that we have not uh, now today the Muslim people are not going to pray in the mosques. The mosques are closed, you know, lock up. Today, the, yesterday, yesterday uh, when I ring the, it is difficult to you know to contact with in Burma. Uh, I was con uh, last the before the before yesterday I contact my 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 village and many time I ring and then I I uh, I, I have uh, suddenly I contact one person I I call the seventh person and then I someone receive my call it is difficult to contact and then I ask them you know the people are crying you know the they have even in the Ramadan the people has no food. Oh. No water. Uh, they are under attack for the uh, uh, Rakhine people and the gov and government uh, uh, military in the government uh, under government. Uh, if uh, the who had the pe uh, people has the, f uh, the people have the uh, uh, food and they are looting the Rohingya looting the ro looting Rohingya shop ro Rohingya food. And they they are they are not going to buy food for the, the themselves in the outside outside they, uh, they are going they are all the time at home they are they are they are saying that it is the curfew curfew is for only the curfew is for only one community it, uh, right brother Mohammed thank you thank you <laughs> brother Mohammed thank you so much for that vivid illustration about the oppression and the terrible circumstances that the Muslims of Burma are facing may Allah help you brother and your family and all the Muslims of Burma. And uh, we look forward to having another show in a year to talk about the, the positive effects, the positive uh, situation. Hopefully it will change in the future, inshallah. Thank you so much, Brother Mohammed uh, Rafiq, uh, Burmese Muslim from Ireland. Thank you so much, Brother, for your call. Uh, Dr. Mohammed, I have so many questions for you. Would you like to complete your thought or would you like me to get into my questions? Uh, first of all, I would like to share with you that the United Nations recognizes the military regime in Burma as the world's most suppressive and abusive regime. So it's acknowledged. Everybody recognizes that. When the media portrays the Buddhists as peaceful people and kind and... Uh, right. In America, they, we have to say, oh, the Muslims are the terrorists, okay. but the Buddhists, mashallah, they're so nice, they wouldn't harm a fly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it, once again, it's our fault because when uh, Muslim leaders buy sporting channels and uh, music right. channels, they spend uh, billions and billions of dollars supporting music and music clips right. and video clips, uh, you know. Uh, to waste the time of Muslims and dis, uh, distract, Muslims. distract them from the, the, the main purpose of life 
And this is once again our money. So we don't have a channel that really portrays, except for a few videos here or there on uh, Al Jazeera, for any th uh, instance. And, right. and I, I really appreciate that. Right. But we needed more and more and more. We have to educate the international community. They have to know what's going on. We have to put pressure, international pressure, on the Burmese government and uh, uh, on, uh, on on the United Nations. Right. Uh, if you're living in the West. Uh, every Muslim, you should write to your senator, your congressman, okay. that they have to uh, speak out loud. We as Muslims have also to make uh, a move. So I don't mind even protesting before the foreign ministers in the Muslim countries in order to uh, uh, raise awareness right. of uh, the, the Burmese uh, issue. The Rohingya is an ethnicity, as the brother said, is a minority. And also this minority, or Muslim minority, according to the United Nations, uh, are the, the, the most devastated minority in the world. They have suffered the most. You know, can you imagine this military regime, the Donai state to burn villages, entire villages, young, old, men and women, everybody, they burn them to death. We have some awful pictures. I just uh, uh, fear that it is not proper to show them, but they're available. There are uh, uh, videos on the YouTube and pictures everywhere for those who would like to live the moment and know how much our brothers and sisters are suffering and we are careless. So if, I d if there is anything that I would request uh, my fellow Muslims uh, who are not in an official position, do not have really the means of uh, changing the situation by force, yes, I repeat, by force, then currently at least seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala via the dua, especially at the time of iftar. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِلصَّائِمِ عِنْدَ فِطْرِهِ دَعْوَةُ لَا تُرَدْ Yesterday I was invited to an iftar, a group of uh, people or business, they held an iftar, and on the table, before iftar, they gave a letter to each one. I wish I uh, could uh, borrow it with me, but it's in Arabic, which says, do not forget your brothers and sisters in oh. Burma and in Syria. Include them in your mm -hmm. dua. Trust me, you just lose your appetite when you see the images and when you remember the situation and we're not doing much as, you know, ordinary or layman Muslims. Dua, make a lot of dua. Uh, uh, invade the, the social networks with the uh, comments and remarks, especially those who are sitting day and night talking about nonsense and wasting their time. Whatever happens to the Burmese today, if we don't move, it's going to happen to another Muslim community That's over right. and over and over. As I said, since I was a child, I hear the Imams making dua for uh, Muslims in Burma. Uh, you know, in the 1942, there was a huge massacre. Uh, 100,000 Muslims were brutally killed. They burned their bodies. Uh, and they burned them alive. And in the 1978, there was a, a, a wave of uh, expelling uh, almost half a million Muslims of them. The, the whole Burmese population is like 55, 50 to 55 million. Uh, there is about 10 to 11 million Muslims. Can you imagine 10 and, or 11 million Muslims? Let's say 10, 11, uh, 10 million Muslims are being oppressed by 40 million and the whole international community and particularly the Muslim Ummah is just sitting back and watching, not doing anything. Rather, if they happen to see that on the news, they flip uh, the channel. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa, the believers are but brothers. We should be brothers and sisters. And he said, Unsur akhaka zaliman aw mazluman. We have to support our brothers whether we know them uh, or not. Uh, as long as they share us the same belief and faith. Especially when, once we heard from the brother right now and he confirmed that uh, this is a genocide based on religion. Based on religion. Muslims have to prove that they belong to this country or they will be kicked out. They are not allowed for the basic rights which is education. I saw some of these concentration camps. Uh, they teach each other and they are only allowed out to the primary level. Dr. Mohammed, I believe the Western media doesn't want this uh, this story to get out into the into the news because this will uh, destroy their the image of Buddhism as this piece of religion, of course, as Muslims uh, as terrorists. Which uh, and not only the Buddhists, but the human rights activists, Amnesty International right, Community, they? they're you know deaf and blind. Right. They would only move, and it will be a revolution all over the world if there is a statue. Yeah, well, that was like, my next question, Dr. Mal. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Several years ago, uh, some Afghani people destroyed statues in Afghanistan of a large Buddha, mm -hmm. and the whole Western world was enraged by this. 
10 years later, we have thousands upon thousands of Muslim people Hundreds being, sla of thousands. being slaughtered, but we don't hear those same countries at all. Yeah, I, I shouldn't be expecting these guys to stretch out their hands of help for us, other than giving some flower and along with the Bible, of course. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. I would rather blame, uh, blame ourselves. Right. Okay. We have the means, we have the resources. Why are these uh, Buddhist people are working in the Muslim countries, in the Gulf? Right, Why course. are they still working there? Right. You know, it, what happens to the Muslim embassies and ambassador, ambassadors in, in Burma? Why are they doing there? What yeah. are they doing there until now? Right, of course. You know? We had no leadership coming from. Where is the government in Riyadh, Cairo, Istanbul? Where is our leadership? Isn't that, that is much more disappointing, isn't it? That the, the well, I, I can tell you it is, is not sufficient to condemn what's happening. And to say we condemn this and we ask the Burmese government to do or not to do. Uh, there are many, many ways when you have the means, when you are a country. I don't want to name a country or a particular country. But, المسلمون تتكافأ دماؤهم ويقوم بذمتهم أدناهم. It is not because they are different ethnicity, they don't belong to us. Once they are Muslims, they do belong to us and we belong to them and we will be asked about their safety before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, I, I believe that every one of us have a role to play right now. Number one, spread the awareness of the devastation of uh, the uh, uh, Burmese Muslims, especially in Arakan. Educate our children about that. Speak about it in schools. I would like with the beginning of the scholastic year that the teachers would ask their students to make researches about Burma, when did Islam enter Burma, and other parts of the world, the Muslim population, and so on, in order to be aware of it. Once we're aware of it, some of us will make a move, and their move will be effective. And what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us is just to make a move. He said with the gods to Ghazwat Badr, وَلَقَدْ نَصَرَكُمُ اللَّهُ بِبَدْرٍ وَأَنْتُمْ أَذِلَّهُ Every battle Muslims were victorious, were lesser in number, but because they were humbling themselves before Allah. Even if they were humiliated, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them victory uh, afterward. Thank you, Dr. Salah. We actually have a Skype call. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Please go ahead, brother Uthman. Assalamu alaikum, brother Uthman. Can you hear me? Brother Uthman, are you there? Perhaps you can give us a call back, brother. With man, I'm sorry, the line cut off. Dr. Salah, I'm, um, I apologize for interrupting you. That's uh, Dr. Salah, I wanted to ask you, bring this to your attention. Uh, of course, Burma, subhanAllah, look at the irony. Recently had a very famous Nobel, Nobel Peace Prize winner. Her name is Aung Su Kyi. She yeah. was very, very famous. Where is she now? She recently released, finally, a small statement that said something to the effect um, that we should have sympathy for the minority. Sympathy. Well, this is the Nobel Peace Prize If any person happens to see these images and these videos and his heart does not move and cry, he doesn't deserve to live. He doesn't deserve to be called a human being. This is a reality. And by the way, I'm saying this whether these guys are Muslims or non-Muslims. The human blood is sacred. The human blood is sacred. Why are we doing that to each other? On what basis? On account of religion. This is a basic genocide. These guys, they live in the same country, they belong to the same nation, born and raised there. I mean, they were not imported from China. They right, did not right. invade the country from uh, Bangladesh. Right, right. But, they you know, if there is a, a Christian minority here or there anywhere, oh, the whole international community will cry out loud and make a big deal out of it because they stopped building a church here or uh, 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 a non-Muslim was killed here or there. Even though it may be single incidents, but the systematic genocide in many places against Muslims is completely neglected. We do have to have our own media. If we can, then the internet activists, Muslims, the youth have to work hard uh, on spreading this news and educating the entire community. Thank you, Dr. Salah. We have a phone call from Abu Sufyan. Assalamu alaikum, brother. How are you? Hello, Sheikh. Alaikum, Alaikum Salaam. Salaam. Uh, actually, this is obviously, um, you know, I belong to, you know, I'm from Pakistan, I know that. I have been going through the web. I saw the media in Pakistan, though it's a so-called Muslim country, they have more time for advertising the names and, you see, the activities of the Indian actresses and actors. Yeah. And But they do not have a single minute to... Uh, Portray, you know, the, the, the yeah, because that disturbs the peace. In the, in the Burma. So, my 
my, I, my question is, you see, being Muslim, we have some obligation, like uh, uh, Allah said, you know what happened? How we can apply? Because, you know, the only country is with attaching to Burma is Bangladesh, and the lady, she is secular. She is not allowing even aid, aid giving agencies to go there. So how can we do? Where, how we can? We are only making prayers doesn't apply and doesn't work in the present situation. We need something actually to do for them. Thank you so much for your call, Brother Hakim. Doctor, will answer you, inshallah. Thank you so much for your call. As a matter of fact, the Rohingyas, uh, Muslim refugees in Bangladesh, are right. suffering also a great right. deal in Bangladesh right. stuff. So they take away their citizenship, they send them to other countries where they suffer as well, yeah. because the host country cannot uh, absorb them. Uh, so they say, Sheikh, we have about, uh, Dr. Muhammad, excuse me, we have about uh, a minute left. Can you just briefly summarize your thoughts and feelings and, and give the Muslims of Burma a message of hope? Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, congratulate you for your strength of Iman. So far, even though there is a systematic war against Muslims and genocide, not a single Muslim converted. They're working hard on converting them, but not a single Muslim, not a single case was reported. Rather, they are very steadfast, uh, and they hold fast to their deen. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your iman, and strengthen your iman, and make you victorious. Uh, victory is coming, I have no doubt. In Egypt, and uh, at what time we lost hope. Many people lost hope and said, not a chance. Look at it, alhamdulillah, it is moving. And uh, brothers and sisters in Gaza, they can come in and out and get their food and their supplies. Things are moving. Patience and only seeking the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One day things will do change. And this is a prophecy of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And please pardon us and forgive us for our shortcoming. I know that it's not sufficient to say so. But we promise to include you in our dua and do our best. If there is anything in our capacity, we should do it. Then inshallah, we will do it. Thank you for your time and your thoughts, Dr. Muhammad Salah. We certainly appreciate it. You guys at home, thank you for watching Ramadan Boss. We look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Don't forget to keep the people of Burma in your prayers. As-salamu alaykum. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home. We'll talk about Huda. We'll talk about our way. Come join us and have your say. Let's talk about our way. Remember you are not alone. Huda is the light in your home.